So we need to emphasize unity. The brain, the head of the body, the, the head is Jesus. The Holy Spirit May 2nd, gives us his orders. If we're not listening to his orders, there's going to be a malfunction. I had a friend, I remember when I was growing up, and I remember the day he told us that he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I was young. I didn't quite understand what that meant. And then I had it explained to me that the brain has the cortex of the brain, little hard patches form um, on the brain and on the spinal cord. And so the message that is normally transmitted from the brain to the parts of the body are, are, are unable to make the right connection. And so the body, instead of a smooth motion, will be forced to make jerky motions and uncontrolled motions. And I watched my friend deteriorate over the years as those patches uh, became more pronounced. So back to the body. You are not the body of Christ individually. We are the body of Christ together. So the next topic, just pay attention. Any more than you are not the temple of the Holy Spirit. We've told you before. It's not singular like you're a temple, you're a temple, I'm a temple. No, we all together, when we gather together, are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we need to emphasize unity. The brain, the head of the body, the, the head is Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives us his orders. If we're not listening to his orders, there's going to be a malfunction. I had a friend, I remember when I was growing up, and I remember the day he told us that he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I was young. I didn't quite understand what that meant. And then I had it explained to me that the brain, the head of the body, the, the head is Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives us his orders. If we're not listening to his orders, there's going to be a malfunction. I had a friend. I remember when I was growing up. And I remember the day he told us that he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I was young. I didn't quite understand what that meant. And then I had it explained to me that the brain has the cortex of the brain, little the brain, the head of the body, the, the head is Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives us his orders. If we're not listening to his orders, there's going to be a malfunction. A I had a friend, I remember when I was growing up, and I remember the day he told us that he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I was young, I didn't quite understand what that meant, and then I had it explained to me that the brain has, the cortex of the brain, little hard patches form um, on the brain and on the spinal cord. And so the message that is normally transmitted from the brain to the parts of the body are, are, are unable to make the right connection. And so the body, instead of a smooth motion, will be forced to make jerky motions and uncontrolled motions. And I watched my friend deteriorate over the years. As those patches uh, became more pronounced. So, anyway, back to... Sounds like you had a friend named Jesus who had multiple sclerosis, who was the, the head of Christ that had uh, these uncontrollable movements. When we put a certain gift or a certain gifted person on a pedestal, pedestalizing any person is bad for that person. And ben. so I threw up four times. Just spewed that out of my mouth I guess whatever it was was lukewarm and then Jesus never fails it's a perfect picture of Jesus now here's a little test for you insert your name see how far you can get down the list without throwing up <laughs> perfect picture of Jesus now here's a little test for you insert your name See how far you can get down the list without throwing up. April 22nd, 2022.
April 27th, 2022. This sounds exactly like the character of God. God is love, 1 John 4, 8. God is love. This is a perfect description of God. In fact, this is a perfect description of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus suffers long and is kind. Jesus does not envy. He doesn't parade himself. He's not puffed up. He doesn't behave rudely. He doesn't seek his own. He's not provoked. He thinks no evil. He does not rejoice in iniquity, but Jesus rejoices in truth. He bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus never fails. It's a perfect picture of Jesus. Now here's a little test for you. Insert your name. See how far you can get down the list without throwing up. I mean, it gets ridiculous after a while. I'll try it. So he is talking about the equality and the necessity of each part of the body, whether you see it or not. And he's going to go on to say that you have parts of the body that are never seen or rarely seen, and you protect them. You can thank God that your body, your physical body, doesn't act like the church of Jesus Christ. What if your lung... decided it wanted more exposure, wanted to be seen. I'm tired of being under mom. the shirts and blood. By the grace of God, I didn't end up seriously hospitalized. Um, today is, um, um, I've been sick for almost a month. Um, I had several sick? infections, one in my ear, one in my throat, one in my lung. April 27th, April 27th, 27th. And he said he watched him deteriorate in front of his eyes and then he moved on to another subject which made zero sense except for talking about the head of Christ having that problem. And then I can only play you 38 seconds of today's video. Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And uh, Frequency. this is going to be a short video this evening. It's a subject that I am diving into along, of course, with the biblical one I was telling you about last night. So the morning of is the video about frequencies that can make you, you know, spew something out of your mouth. And the day before Jonathan Cleck is speaking about that I am just able to sit here and speak with you guys. <clears throat> guys, I have been struggling uh, to get over the hump. Um, I've been sick for almost a month. Um, I had several infections, one in my ear, one in my throat, one in my lung. I've had this constant, it's, like a, it's just a constant um, vibration over here on this side of my lung for probably a couple months. I started to notice it once I stopped sleeping in front of a fan. What if your lung decided it wanted more exposure? Well, then you would hit it, hit it with some frequencies, right? Uh, I mean... April 22nd. So everything's beforehand. Everything I'm showing you is before this day right here that I'm explaining. What is it? At one point, you said it's all about the frequencies. That's JD. Daniel made a visit. Just letting you know, 
Been hearing you, bud. You're looking good, brother. Much love. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for uh, popping in here and commenting. What if my lung didn't actually want the exposure, but it's getting it anyway? Wanted to be seen. I'm tired of being under the shirts and blouses and under the skin. And I'm important. Yeah, you're so important. We don't want you out and about. You got to stay tucked in there in a bacteria-free environment, breathing away. The body of Christ, the church, malfunctions when we emphasize one gift over another gift. When we put a certain gift or a certain gifted person on a pedestal. Pedestalizing any person is bad for that person and hey, you did if recently you've been diagnosed with a disease that affects the pituitary gland. See, that's the point. There's so many parts of the body that are vital and necessary, and you really don't know or think about them until one malfunction. So it is in the church. If there's malfunction and then all of the focus and all the attention goes to that one little member that is creating the difficulty. Well, now you have to address that. You have to attend to that. You have to get that fixed. You have to go through radiation therapy or physical therapy or surgery, whatever it might take to address the issue. But on a normal day, you shouldn't have to think about your pituitary or your lungs. Just automatic. Yeah. Functioning away, creating chemicals, exchanging synapses, etc. Your body. Jesus never fails. It's a perfect picture of Jesus. Now here's a little test for you. Insert your name. See how far you can get down the list without throwing up. Um, um, I've been sick for almost a month. Um, I had several infections, one in my ear, one in my throat, one in my lung. By the grace of God, I didn't end up seriously hospitalized. Um, today is literally the first day that I have felt uh, where I don't feel like I'm sick. Uh, the first day to where I I mean, it gets ridiculous after a while. I'll try it. Skip suffers long and is kind. Skip does not envy. He does not parade itself himself. He's not puffed up. He doesn't behave rudely. You haven't seen me drive. <laughs> he doesn't seek his own. So often I do. He's not provoked. Too often I am. He thinks no evil. I haven't had a day where that has happened. So now we know by doing that little taste test, that little comparison, how far we have to grow to be Christ-like and how much work he has yet to do on us. Even if you run away from pain, and you do, which I doubt, because I'm going to show you later on, but even if you do, that unfairness doesn't just linger or swim or disappear. It finds somebody else to pass it upon. We know by doing that little taste test, that little comparison, how far we have to grow to be Christ-like and how much work he has yet to do on us. Great. But, verse 8, whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are times Tongues, they will cease. Whether there, whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. It's a blip of that. You're not that special, unique, special person that needs to be specially cared for. Do you understand why this environment has become more socialist now? 
Everyone is playing that special card, me. What about me? What about me? It's a whole bigger picture than you. It's everybody. It's a whole system of people that's broken and hurt. My third point is because of people. Because of people. Look at verse 19. Verse 19. The bow return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth, let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. What's that verse pointing out? God saying, if you decide to return, Jeremiah, get back into business again with me. All right, get out of that whining state, that uh, pity party state. I'm going to uh, bring you again. I'm going to use you again to stand before me and to preach. To be my prophet. I can only play you 38 seconds of If you take forth video. the precious from the vial. See, it's about people here. It's about people it here. Thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee. And then, He's saying, yeah, if you're able to have these souls saved, so to speak, these souls rescued, these people right with God, go. so other people who are dying and in pain, if you were able to help them out the and game. they return to you, Movement. but don't you dare return to them. Because why? They're in that down, house, pitiful, like uh, sinful state. God doesn't want Jeremiah to do join them. He wants the door, those people to join times. where Jeremiah is back to God. So and that's the devil's oh successful God. tactic is to get you out of here and join the people nice. at the low, lowliness down here. Because God sees not just one person, Gene Kim, in this unique problem, unique situation, unique pain. He sees 10 to 100 different people like him. All at once. And probably a lot of them are saying, why me? And God's like, all of you are in the same boat together. <laughs> you have to understand that God sees a much bigger picture than yourself. All you're seeing is yourself, your pain, your problem, every specific detail, every stressful situation. I don't sick. I but just don't, I mean, I God sick sees more things, than that. God sees a hundred people like you who are going through that. Why? Because he's God. He sees everybody all at once. You have to understand that there's a much bigger picture than just yourself. You think the whole world revolves around you? Especially when the Bible points out I just that because of sin... And so out of the blue, just... Bleh. Because it was around one o'clock. So I got Guess to work what? At seven. Unfairness has to happen. Because sin happens in our life, unfair consequences, unfair things have to happen in our lives. And because of unfairness that's spreading throughout all the world, God sees a much bigger picture than what you're seeing. You're only seeing the unfair consequence of sin in yourself. That's all you're seeing. But God, he's not seeing that. He's seeing the unfair consequence of sin, not just you, but with everybody everywhere around the world. Well, in all fairness, I don't have 100 TV screens to be able to see all the people throwing up at the same time for the same exact thing that was done to me. And he hears that every single day, the cries of people every single day, the whining every single day, the people who are uh, calling out to him for pain every single day, God sees all of that at once. You might say, why me? Because you're preferred. You're preferred. You have to realize you are that unique one, perfect for that unique task, who can break that cycle. But I thought you said the exact same problem that you're going through, the exact same circumstance that you're going through, the exact same experience you're going through. No, you're not the oddball. You're not the weirdo. You're not the special, unique person whose pain nobody understands. You have to realize you are that unique one. I thought it wasn't. I, I am and I am. I am and I'm not. Perfect for that unique task. Who can break that cycle? Not the weirdo. You're not the special, unique person whose pain nobody understands. There are people out there around the world who have the same background, everything that's the same like you. If it was, then you'd probably see hundreds of people like you 
And then you'd realize, wow, I'm not the only one with this unfair issue. That's why you have to keep going. Yes, you would. might say, why do I have to? Must be a good time for a fast. And then have to keep going. Because those same hundreds of people who have the exact same problems like you, I guarantee a good number of them are lost and not saved. And they do not have Jesus Christ. But you do. When Skip or Kim, when they're talking, they're talking to their church. That the people that they're, they are the head of their church and are talking to them. They're also talking to other uh, people who are running the planet. And then they're talking to single individual people with their own message in tongues. And then it's up for you to interpret it correctly or not. Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15. We need to fix this, Mike. Okay, Jeremiah. At the very beginning, we need to fix this, Mike. I, I need to, I must need to fix my mic. It... All right, folks, God bless you guys and welcome. Because I was talking to, uh, my... Henry was trying to say something to me yesterday before Kim made his video about, but apparently my mic was messed up. All right, Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15. We need to fix this mic, okay? Jeremiah chapter 15. All right, good evening, friends. Listen, I'm sitting here trying to get this video ready for you guys tonight. As I said, it would be late tonight before I had it up and going for you. Uh, I had actually recorded about a half-hour message this evening that I was going to share with you, only to find out I totally forgot to connect the microphones. Uh, therefore... The video didn't record audio. All you got is me going, and you don't get to hear anything. Oh, well. Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15. We need to fix this mic, okay? Jeremiah chapter 15. There's the tie-in. So what I do is I tie things together uh, like a bow. May 2nd, 20 hours ago. It's 8.28 p.m., May 2nd, 2022. Where there's two or more witnesses, and apparently I ha I'll have similar problems. I thought, because I didn't watch the video that I made yesterday, and I got this morning, I heard I heard you talk about the microphone, and I'm thinking for a minute, uh, let, me, let me find out that my microphone wasn't working. But it wasn't me. Very detrimental situation and experience that the Lord was able to use An as a message. And I hope that it Your will help you. I Opened the door, threw up four more times. Some dude was trying by. He's like, oh my God. I hope that it will help you. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 15, and then we'll look at verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 15. The prophet Jeremiah is the one speaking in this passage. And if you recall, Jeremiah, he wanted to quit the ministry. Uh, he was all alone. He had a lot of unfair things happen in his life. Now, we know that there was a time that he even quit mentioning the name of the Lord. That's how bad it was. But then he quickly repented, got right with the Lord, got back on his feet, and served the Lord. Yes. Now, in Je got right with the Lord, got back on his feet, and back on his feet. And serve the Lord. Now, in Jeremiah 15, 15, we can see a little, we can see a glimpse of that, of the heart of Jeremiah. And perhaps there are some people who have the same heart or who might have that same feeling of words of what you're about to read. You have to understand that. You, that's why you got to get out of that pity party state. You're not that special that you think you are. Thanks. There are so Jonathan Click was talking about being sick. I don't ever get sick. I just don't. I mean, I get sick of things, but I just don't. Plenty get of sick people and, like you going through that pain. The only reason why you don't know is because you haven't met those people. But God met.
and I don't have the I don't have um, access to to surveilling people. Those people, God sees those people every single second. The Bible only see ourself, 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 and ourself, and so that's why door. you think that your pain Just is so special and unique. Bleh. You need to get out of yourself and look at the big around picture around you. And when so you get over yourself. Mm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's why you think that your pain is so special and unique. You need to get out of yourself and look at the big picture around you. And when you look at that, your heart's going to break and you're going to forget your own grief and you're going to look at plenty of other people's grieves. Yeah. Grievances. That's what's going to happen. Well, <clears throat> can't say that I don't believe that people that I show can literally predict the future because they control the future. Plenty of, uh, plenty of fatherless, motherless people, plenty of people who are uh, childless, plenty of people who have no parents, plenty of people who went through broken situations. You're just a blip of that. You're not that special, unique, special person that needs to be specially cared for. Do you understand why this environment has become more socialist now? Everyone is playing that special card, me. What about me? What about me? It's a whole bigger picture than you. It's everybody. It's a whole system of people that's broken and hurt. Saith the Lord, if thou return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth, let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. What's that verse pointing out? God's saying, if you decide to return, Jeremiah, get back into business again with me. All right, get out of that whining state, that uh, pity party state. So again, I'm going to use you again to stand before me and to preach, to be my prophet. If you take forth the precious from the vial, see, it's about people here. It's about people here. Thou shalt be as my mouth, let them return unto thee. He's saying, yeah, if you're able to have these souls saved, so to speak, these souls rescued, these people right with God, other people who are dying and in pain, if you were able to help them out and they return. Fine, I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of the, you know, Kim, I got to tell you, you do a great job. You just. You do, you have a way of convicting me on certain things that, not such a conviction, but more of a, stop complaining, you big wuss kind of a, a message that you send. I appreciate them because that's why I said in my video yesterday that Robin is, uh, he's on the back burner. It's time for the other twin to step up and start displaying the other side of the twin system. Return to you, but don't you dare return to them. Because why? They're in that down, pitiful, uh, sinful state. Sometimes I don't, I just don't take a lot of things serious because nothing's really happening in my life besides what I'm saying. And but then when you think about it, like these are these are the top YouTube channels, and they obviously have say in what's gonna happen in your own future. Not just the future itself, but your specific future. Yeah, it has the ability to tell you what's gonna happen in your future. So you might want to listen to those people, you know, what they have to say, consider, you know, is, is it is it something that's trying to lead you astray or is it something that's trying to bring you into uh, stop being a complainer? So I understand that point of view and I appreciate that about you, Kim. God doesn't want Jeremiah to do join them. He wants those people to join where Jeremiah is back to God. And that's the devil's successful tactic is to get you out of here and join the people at the low lowliness down here. But the devil can also get you from going from down there and back up, back up here by throwing you down there at first and then your spirit being able to rise back up again.
That's what he wants you to do. No, God wants you to be here with him, and he wants you to take other people up with you. What breaks the cycle, you have to understand, of this unfairness in the sinful world is when one person finally opens his or her eyes to say, hey, guess what? You know what I'm going to do? Is that I'm going to make sure that I'm the one that stands on top and then I can rescue other people and get them to stand on top with me. That's where everything starts and begins. Starts and begins. You might say, why? Because if you run away from unfairness, the unfairness of pain, you forget this. Know this is that it will pass on to someone else. Even if you run away from pain, and you do, which I doubt. That's like if you're the weaker, if you don't deal with the, the pain, then they'll just give you pain another way towards another person that's close to you, if you don't deal with it. Now, because I'm going to show you later on. But even if you do, this is that it will pass on to someone else. Even if you run away from pain, and you do, which I doubt, because I'm going to show you later on, but even if you do, that unfairness doesn't just linger or swim or disappear. It finds somebody else to pass it upon. You Understood. You know that? Uh, let's say that I, as a pastor, quit. You know where that unfairness, that pain, that burden is going to lie upon? The if you decided... If you decided to quit, is that your choice? Or is it that other people want you to stay up? Because you got to get out of your head and they appreciate your work. But maybe you don't so much. So maybe I just wasn't taking things as serious. But we are at that point where I guess this is the thing that happens in my actual life to see it like this, to understand that, all right, these are the gods. They run this entire system. W what am I going to do? I can't stop it. I just have to deal with what's going to take place the best way I can and be a good example because I know I'm going to be watched throughout, even if YouTube's not even up. The people here. What if a parent gives up on God? That unfairness, that pain's going to lie upon the children. What if the next generation runs away from pain? And that's what every generation is. I guess it, it's like, man, but when does this end? When does it end? When? Why can't people just tell me exact, the exact date? Why do I have to wait like I'm in jail for the last moment to get out and then I know I'm leaving? I guess that's why... This is called Why Me? Is doing. Playing victimization car, running away from pain. Guess what? They pass it on to the next generation, the next generation. And in colleges, I hear this. In now, I don't actually plan on quitting anything. But sometimes I'm looking for answers in a way that maybe I'll get a, maybe I'll get a better answer out of it where there's at least a timeline to understand maybe it's seven years maybe it's six years maybe it's cut short or maybe it's six years and it's 365 days and there's a portion of that walking with enoch and then then you'll start finding in universities they say guess who's going to help us from this economy and the teachers look at the students you you guys are the one who's going to take the brunt of all the tax force and save the economy and everything. How? I just see a lot of people that have high positions in different areas and can show me something that helps me to understand that they know what's next, step by step. So it would just be nice to know, like, if there was a timeline. I need to let the Lord compliment me. I need to let to, to remember his what he promised to me. If you went through a lot of hard times, OK, but then the person say, just stick out a year with this hardship and then uh, I'll take care of you for a lie. You'll be a billionaire.
You and I are going to go through the stressful, strenuous places at the workplace so that we can become a billionaire because it's just one year. But God, you don't picture God saying to you, hey, man, for eternity, man, for eternity, man, man, you're going to be ruler of over nations, man, gold, silver, precious stones, not a billion pieces of paper, you know. Man, I mean, uh, if God said that to you in person, imagine, look unto Jesus with me. Will you please today? Imagine God saying that to you just a little longer. Hang in there. I'm going to give you this, 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 and this. Amen, brother. Amen. Then you might say, okay, I'll just hang on a little more, Lord. <laughs> look unto Jesus. You don't picture that. Um, somebody's going to rise up and have more power than everybody. I'm seeing the muscles being flexed over in Kim's direction. And, um, and I've heard about, I heard about through the grapevine where China is going to be the next dominant world power. It's a rumor out there. Imagine you are that. Do you realize that? You are the chosen. You are that superhero that can break the unfair cycle of the pain of sin. Somebody is crying out to you, rescue me, save me. Will you be that person to remember his, what he promised to me? Thanks, Kim. If you went through a lot of hard times, okay, but then the person say, just stick out a year with this hardship, and then uh, I'll take care of you for life. You'll be a billionaire. A year, May 2nd. That would be, that would be May 2023. May 21st, 11 years, 2022. Three hundred and sixty five days after that. It would make sense for the last three hundred and sixty five days, but whenever the timeline is, is for somebody to walk with God. And in this script world, you gotta when you know what your role is, then play it. So I've just been trying to figure out my role and the scripts that are being played already. And if there was another 365 days, but some drastic, something drastic has to change somewhere or else where do you begin the 365 days of importance of what? Something unseen behind the scenes? Well, yeah, that happens too, but literally... Something would have to happen. A World War III would have to actually be declared and all kinds of panic everywhere. That would have to happen first. And then there's a whole year of surveilling somebody that knows kind of what's going on and who's doing it and being guided through it and being and here understanding where your where your part is without somebody actually telling you, like your boss having a script to read anything, everything's unknown. And then you start finding out. Times, okay? But then the person say, just stick out a year with this hardship, and then uh, I'll take care of you for life. You'll be a billionaire. You and I are going to go through the stressful, strenuous places at the workplace. It's right here. So this, this is definitely the workplace. See that? And it sounds like everybody knows their their role in their script, except me. But nobody's going to tell me directly. So that we can become a billionaire because it's just one year. But God, you don't picture God saying to you, hey, man, for eternity, man, for eternity, man, man, you're going to be ruler of over nations, man, gold, silver, precious stones, not a billion pieces of paper, you know, man, I mean, uh, if God said that to you in person, imagine, look unto Jesus with me. Will you please today? Imagine. 
God saying that to you just a little longer. Hang in there. I'm going to. But remember both sides. And the idea is for. Imagine God saying that to you just a little longer. Hang in there. I'm going to give you this, 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 and this. Well, do uh, fulfillments. The one group is being told about this. And then to whoever it is that lasts for that uh, 365 days, it's the rest. Then you might say, okay, I'll just hang on a little more, Lord. But you don't look unto Jesus. You don't picture that. But you don't look unto Jesus. You don't picture that. Imagine you are that. Do you realize that you are the chosen? You are that superhero that can break the unfair cycle of the pain of sin. Somebody is crying out to you, rescue me, save me. Will you be that person to take up the mantle? And then as you go through pain and as you go down, can you picture, I mean, be in the realistic plane, be in the spiritual world with me today, will you? Can't you see God in front of you well, saying, in my Man, spirit. That pain that you're going through right now, it hurts so much, doesn't it? I feel for you. But I feel like you've definitely been given all the authority to be able to fulfill everything that you're saying. And it will happen. But guess what? In heaven, it's going to erase all of that. You don't even remember it. Yeah. Are you going to be my good buddy in heaven, Kim? After I'm done being tormented to death? And I'm, that pain you're feeling right now, every moment of that, every moment of that, look at this, son. See that piece of gold? Okay, see that mansion right there? Okay, see that blessing from tragedy? I could turn it for good. Look at that. Look at that. Look I mean, at least you're given a, a year notice, but you got to stick with your word. Look at that. And then if you and I saw that, like, point blank, face to face, you and I would charge hell with a squirt gun and wouldn't care one bit what happened. But the problem is, is that we're not in that spiritual world and looking at that. That's why the Bible says, set your affection on things above, not on this earth. And you're not looking above. And you need to look at that. You need hey. to see Jesus smile oh. at you. Lord, jeez. You need oh. to see Jesus smile at oh, you. Him. And say, let me give you a big hug. And then he warms your heart and say, that's okay. You can keep crying, child. You can keep pouring your complaints to me because I can take it. Pour it out to me. And you need to picture that. And then at the judgment seat of Christ, oh, what glory. Yeah. Can you picture that every pain that you went through in life and God showed it and that he showed it off to the people and say, see what my child did? See what he or she did? You see what he or she did? And then imagine those crowds of people in heaven shaking your hand and you have no idea. I got saved because of you. Thank you so much. You saved my life because of your testimony, because of that money you gave to the church, the attendance that you gave, that small word of encouragement that you said to me as a pastor that, that I didn't quit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then you get so many hands shaking you because you're the Superman. You're the Superman. You're the superhero because that's your time, judgment seat of Christ. It's a time you get your just reward and then God says well done thou good and faithful servant here you go and then God gives you something and what are you gonna do you can't just help but fall on your knees and say if only I knew what heaven would be like so much earlier I would have a better motivation to serve you I would have not let pain and trial and depression depression control and rule over my life I would have stuck out a little more. I would have tried to win a few more souls to you and transform it into something beautiful where you are the protagonist. 
You are the main character. You are that hero. And God says, here you go. You and I would say, I never asked for this. I never signed up for this. I never wanted this power. Boy, is that the truth? Because I never signed up for this uh, at all. This gift, I see it more as a curse. But God said to you, Superman, no, it's going to be something important. You're going to save so many lives out there. You're going to contribute and help someone. If only. I think I can respect you playing the God role in this in this series. And I'm playing the role of the guy that's down on earth that's doing it without any connections on the inside, communicating with those that run the planet. I mean, I'm up for the 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 uh, the role, too. But there's also the spirit, the most God, most high God in heaven. The highest God is above and beyond everything. And it's a spirit. And that's the same spirit that drove me into this YouTube platform that I did not sign up for. Didn't ask for it. Didn't understand it. But here I am standing and understanding it. And seeing the script of this real live movie being played out. Something so hard to believe that you can be a part of it, a major part of it, communicating with the top end YouTube channels, the very most intelligent at the top of the list of people and they want to play this movie out with you <laughs> all right Robin sure well you'll see in the end when the story comes out this movie the fulfillment of it and then just check and see who the who the main character is of the movie because it's going to come out this is a documentary that everybody hasn't denied that they were making, especially directors. So they're making, they're directing this movie, this real live Truman Show, end world prophecy. If only you would let me. If only you would let me. Hey, Superman, one day you'll be the one holding that mantle crying with tears in your eyes and saying to God, why me? <laughs> why would you use me? I'm not worthy. I'm undeserving. And Yeah. But when the movie comes out and the truth is there, that main character. If the unfairness of sins happens, you should have left it alone, Lord. Why would you use me to create something beautiful? Well, why would you use me to create something beautiful? Well, that's our God. He creates something beautiful. Can you start to make me feel like a superhero too? Where I can actually shoot lightning bolts from my fingers? Because I said to Justin that somebody's going to be that person where they're able to strike things because they have the people behind them that are going to send the, the graphics in a direction and the sounds because that would be pretty cool in this movie to be a superhero and not even sign up for the movie I'm like not even an extra nobody invited me if you only knew Gene Kim long time ago if only you knew me long time ago. I was such a nobody, such a person that was aloof, such a person who would every single person worry about that. How's he going to make his way in life? But because I had God, that was my only thing. Because I had God, I'm living in miracles. So many miracles out of my life not because I make the miracles, God used me. God used me. To give them, God used me. 
to give the miracles to you. All right, Kim, I'll give it a shot. I mean, I'll, I'll keep communicating back and forth with you. Maybe it'll help people. Uh, you have some kind of something you want to show them and then. Be a miracle to somebody's life today. Just like that. Just a, just a little example of something. I'm up for it. You know that. Be a miracle to somebody's life today. Why me? Well, because of persecutors. It's funny because I was doing that when I was doing the video yesterday. Before I push record, just talking to myself, knowing that, knowing who's listening. I said, why me? Why me, Lord? But I was only kidding. I knew why. The devil don't like Superman. The devil don't like you. He, he's the antagonist. He well, hey. Dr. Gene Kim. I mean, I don't like you. He wants people to die and burn in hell. That's why it's you. Why me? Well, because all you're thinking about is yourself. You're pity partying. But there are other heroes out there like you. You're not the only Superman. Join your brothers and sister in the trench of war. Let's overcome together. Don't think you're so special. Ate my bowl. Well, guess what? Must be a good time for a fast. Yeah, I agree. Why me? Well, because of people. That's the bottom line. People are dying going to hell. People are going to face hurt if you run away from the pain. Someone's going to get hurt. And then that's that's the thing that I'll see more in my life if I don't go in a direction because the movie has a has a, a it's already been written but I don't know my I don't know my part that's why I'm going to get harassed because they're going to show me my part it's like a you get zapped for hitting a wall going bouncing off of it you would kind of stay away from it the wall. That's why you need to stick on. Why me? Because of preference. You fit well. You're at that time, that place, that situation that no one else can be in but you. And God wants to use you to finally break that cycle. I don't even care if somebody, I don't even care if Kim is playing God or thinks he's the God of gods. It, it's a script, first and foremost. And eventually, once we get to that point, then I'll know all the truth about everything. But I respect people that have the highest positions on this planet. Obviously, uh, that's who you would want to talk to. So they're going to put me through some tests and I'll just try and interpret what everybody's saying and what direction I need to go as soon as this thing happens for the next 365 days. Once this thing happens, that 365 days would would be at least an ending point to knowing that, well, that's the end. So deal with it. Maybe the movie's another year long. I don't know. Why me? <laughs> well, because he promised you. Because... <laughs> He yeah. promised you that he'll take care of you. Yeah, it's just, you better fulfill your your port your portion, uh, Kim. That he loves you, and that he'll use you. I'll never understand why me, but all I know is that he promised me, and I'm just gonna just thank him for the promise. That's it. What else can I do? Let's close with a word of prayer. Close with a word of prayer. Father God. Uh, I don't know why you used me to preach this sermon. There are plenty of other people who can have the delivery, the skill, the style, the age, the maturity, the character trait that can deliver this sermon more brilliantly than I can. I don't know. I don't know. It's tough I'll to say. I'll never understand. Don't be so hard me. on yourself. You used my pain, my unfairness 
of everything I went through in my life to create this sermon that could perhaps rescue somebody out there. I don't know why you used me, but thank you. Thank you, Father. May we come home not with grumbling, but with gratitude that you chose us, that you will use And then it's like, John, it's like the Jonathan and then his father, Saul, role. Use us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First, uh, Amen the Micah. Uh, back then in history, Mike the elites, Paul. they would wait for about 100 years. But now they've shrunk it. Now I'm seeing 10 years apart. You see 2001 with 9-11, and then you jump literally 10. Uh, and then you jump. To where it's written together again. It's not there yet. This is an older video. Oval plus the oval. But it says together again. And you look at it from the upside down. 666 is at the end. Even the... The little boat riders were rowing their boats. Got them written in sixes. You ju jump uh, like uh, 20 years after that, boom. Mm, boom, That's so that would be 20 years later. Still waiting on the boom. But now I think it's going to shrink even more. It might go 10 years and 5 years. Why? Because technology is expanding faster. Think about how uh, some of you, think about how some of you ended up in this church. Uh, I thought about quitting so many times, even uh, 5 years ago, actually. Oh, you mean when I first showed up? You're thinking about just quitting then? Like what's, the, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? How, how, uh, some of you, think about how some of you ended up in this church. Uh, I thought about quitting so many times, even uh, five years ago, actually. The first, I came with a bow. A bow we... And then in the end, I tie things together like a bow. And I put Bowie as a target from the very beginning. Way to go, Dad. And everything was unscripted and still is. Uh, I thought about quitting so many times, even five years ago, actually. If I drop down my mantle and my superhero abilities, oh, how, how would have you gotten saved or probably ended up in this church? Uh, I thought about quitting so many times, even uh, five years ago, actually. If I drop down my mantle and my superhero abilities, Oh, how, how would have you gotten saved or probably ended up in this church? Or people watching us online today, how would you have gotten saved and ended up in this church? Abilities. People watching us online today, how would you have gotten saved and ended up in this church? I don't even know how I ended up at your church, Kim. Just, I guess, an algorithm. How did I end up in anybody's church? Or how did I find you guys? Isn't there a whole bunch of other people on YouTube? Like, millions of just pastors, you know, online? How come, how come you guys seem to show me you, that you run the planet? <laughs> 
You're the hero who can make the difference in change. You might say, why? All God needed was one to sacrifice and not think about other people doing the work for him. But just one person to make the sacrifice, come out here at the age of 21 and to make a difference in Silicon Valley and the... Even 21 days of Daniel. Bay Area. Just one. It just takes one to produce this, to counsel and help other people in pain, to make sure other souls get saved. God just has one. 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 Out front of the Philadelphia Art Museum, it's giving you the finger, saying, F you, pay me. Face mask. Like a woman in a, in a V-neck, a leather jacket. Counsel and help other people in pain to make sure other souls get saved. God just has one. Amen, Pastor. One. One. It's you. You're the only one. You're that superhero you got to realize that can rescue that person, rescue those people. Otherwise, let's all run away and let's see how many souls will be saved in this area. Hey, Superman, are you willing to take up that cape and rescue and break the tragedy and the cycle and go out doing your job again, rescuing I, uh, people and not yeah. pity partying yourself and thinking yeah. about your woes. But again, I, I wanted to also use it as a way of communication where I get the message clearly because I don't usually get sick like that just out of the blue and then all of a sudden I'm fine 24 hours later. Because you're the unique one that God has placed and set up everything. And he promised to give you the grace and strength. Amen. Won't you pick up your mantle and start to rescue somebody today? Go church. Go preaching. Isaiah 4, 48 verse 10. Good job, Behold, Jim. I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the fire of affliction. You're in the fire of affliction. You're the hero who can make the difference in change. Think about how uh, uh, some of you, think about how some of you ended up in this church. Where that cycle can finally be broken if there is that one willing to pay the price. And he's going to make sure that it fits you perfectly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know that? He's going to make sure that it fits you perfectly. You might say, why me? Because you're preferred. You're preferred. You have to realize you are that unique one. Perfect for that unique task. Who can break that cycle? Amen. Is that? It can be, it doesn't have to be big. It can even be something so small. Something so small. Esther chapter 4, verse 13 through 14 says, Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Mordecai says, Don't think you're going to run away. This unfair burden, this task where all the Jews are going to get annihilated, you can't run away from that. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou... And thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Oh, even if God didn't exist, there is a law. Somebody has to sacrifice. That cycle can only break if someone is willing to pay the price. Is that you? A lot of times that hero goes through that unfairness, that burden. Why? Because he or she is the only unique person that has that power, that ability.